Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Yes, it's back. Here we go again. Today we're going to take a look inside somebody else's homemade bench power supply or laboratory power supply. I got this thing at a flea market. I paid 10 euro for it, which was a bit more than I originally intended to pay for it. But it's still a pretty good price because... Uh, you can see these uh, nice big volt and amp meters. These things alone must be worth at least 30 euro together. These things are very, very expensive as I had to find out. So uh, definitely a pretty, pretty good deal just for the parts that this thing was made of. Anyway, the person who originally built this thing did uh, have some uh, pretty interesting ideas when building this. So you can see we have two positive and negative outputs down there. These are hooked together, so you can uh, put like uh, some some experiment into here with these uh, wire clamps or some banana plugs into there, and same as for over there. And then you can put something else with banana plugs into there. It's kind of an interesting construction. Over here we have uh, some other... Uh, interesting things. Uh, first, a bit of a stupid thing. The layout is kind of silly. This is the voltage adjustment for these outputs. And as you can see, we have right here a 5 volt output. This is a fixed 5 volt 1 ampere output. And the switch for that is up here, along with an LED. So it's, it's kind of a bad layout, because you'd think this knob had something to do with the 5 volt part. Well, it doesn't power indicator light and a power switch. So uh, that's what's apparent on the front. The back of the unit is everything but spectacular. As you can see the only thing we have there is uh, the power cord which goes through this uh, suspicious rubber affair right there which is kind of brittle. So that needs to be replaced. Also a bit of a violation of uh, safety rules because uh, this metal housing actually has to be grounded especially since it is a bench power supply. So all in all, you'd think this is a pretty nice little construction. Well, it is partially. There are some things that uh, I don't like about this, and uh, those are going to uh, become the subject of uh, future modifications. The first thing becomes apparent as we turn this thing on. I have it plugged in. Let's flip the switch. Yeah, I hope you can hear it as just as well as I can hear it. This thing is freaking loud. I mean, for real, this 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 is really loud. And you can see this uh, wonderful, super bright red LED. Uh, with that LED, you don't need any other work light anymore on your workbench. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, as you can see, I have the screws taken out. So let's take a look inside of this thing. There it is. There we have the inside of the unit, and this is really actually quite nicely made. There is not too much that I could complain about, aside from some little hack jobs like this uh, unnecessary weird cable clamp setup. This is using one of those um, transformers that you can get in, uh, in like hobby stores, which give you all sorts of different voltages. Um, as you can see, it does have a bunch of uh, secondary outputs right there. This is the main circuitry for the adjustable rail. And all this really is, is a setup for an LM317 uh, regulator chip. Well, and I thought I had the data sheet with all the circuits for that LM317 chip over here, but apparently I don't. But uh, this is, I believe, the circuit with improved ripple rejection. That's the title in the in the data sheet. And uh, as you can see, the chip itself is sitting on this heat sink behind it there. The heat sink is too small, should I say. So uh, a ventilator fan does make sense, unfortunately. Now for the 5 volt rail, the 5 volt fixed output. It, uh, it's using this right here, kind of off by itself. 
um, I'm pretty sure this is using one of those uh, 7805 voltage regulators, one ampere, pretty standard, nothing special. And uh, has a little heat sink, which is also too small. So uh, <laughs> that can definitely be improved. Now for the ventilator fan, we have a bit of an overkill going on. This is another LM317 circuit, adjustable and everything just for that silly little fan right here. So uh, basically we have the whole thing right here, once again, over here. And that's going to come out. I'm, 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 I'm going to get rid of that fan, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> that thing has to go. Um, now, the transformer might be a bit too weak for what I'm intending to do with this thing. And that is um, getting uh, getting a little bit more out of this uh, construction. And as you can see, we have a nice little ammeter right there for 5 amps. Problem is, these LM317 chips can output 2 amps at max. And uh, some versions can only output 1.5. This version right here seems to have, well, somewhere in the circuit must be uh, some sort of a bad connection because uh, the maximum current output I can get out of this thing uh, varies between 500 milliamps and 2 amps, which is definitely not quite right. But uh, anyway, even at the full 2 amps, the needle only goes up to right there, so we basically we're wasting uh, more than half of that meter, which is kind of sad. So I am going to modify the circuit so that uh, this thing is going to be able to output 5 amps. The output voltage can be adjusted between right around 1.5 and 23 volts, so that is actually pretty good. Not too much of a waste of uh, voltmeter. There is no adjustment for the output current, no current limiter. The circuit board, as you can see, was homemade, and the previous owner never bothered to screw it in place. It's just uh, kind of stuck on those screws right there. It does hold on, but uh, not very safe. And uh, as you can see, it's, I don't know, kind of a weird construction because it just doesn't take advantage of uh, the... Uh, the, or the capabilities of uh, one of those etched circuit boards like so you can see the filter capacitor has to lie down like that because uh, the the mounting uh, holes for it are just way too close to to the other parts doesn't really make sense and these capacitors right down there are supposed to be right next to the voltage regulator to uh, suppress any kind of oscillations and stuff but uh, well in this one in this power supply they are mounted on the circuit board and then have all these cables going all the way to the voltage regulator which certainly isn't too much of a good construction so this power supply is going to be the subject of future modifications actually I'm going to start right now I have the soldering iron warming up over there and depending on how far I get today, we may go ahead and take another look. So until then, hope you've enjoyed this video and see you again soon.